Hi everyone, uh, this is Luis Diaz at the University of Sao Paulo in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I'm recording this video as an exercise in order to try to understand uh, something related to the Bogli above the gen formalism, especially what is called the parity, parity switching. So this all came in a discussion we had in our, in our group here at, at the University of Sao Paulo. We're going over the this very nice website, Tabocon Mat, uh, me and my students, and we're you know discussing some of the of the details here. And in one of the first presentations, they do talk about the Bogle Bill of the Gen Hamiltonian. And they mention this, right? They have this spectrum, and that's the BDG spectrum. Then mention these crossings over here, right? These crossings, they say, is one, of course, you have uh, two of the states crossing the zero energy in the BDG, BDG formalism. And then mention this. When a pair of levels crosses zero energy, the station energy of the Bogoli above quasi particle changes sign and it becomes favorable to add a quasi particle to or remove it from superconducting quantum dot. This is, you know, they are attaching the the superconducting quantum dot to to the system. And they say, in other words, at each crossing the fermion parity in the ground state of the dot changes from even to odd and vice versa. Hence these crossings are fermion parity switching switches. And we're of course we're discussing and trying to 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 understand that. And I realize it would be better if I recorded this video to try to come up with a very simple example where we see this actually happening. So let, let's start with you know a simple version of this Hamiltonian that they, they put it here. So let's write it down, a uh, much simpler version. Let's do it here. So let's consider only two fermionic operators, right? C1 and C2. So of course, uh, they obey this, right? Uh, the anti commutator is the IJ, right? And let's write a very simple Hamiltonian like this. So we have only two states, and, and let's call them spinless fermions, for simplicity, right? So would it be something like that? Uh, we have energy one, C1 dagger, C1, plus an energy two, C2 dagger, C2. So this is, you know, of course, this Hamiltonian here is quadratic. So if I stopped here, there will be two eigenstates, E1 and E2. But of course, this is a many body Hamiltonian. We have to see, you know, what's the Hilbert space here? The Hilbert space here has four states. Why? I have two fermions. Each of the fermions can be, can either, you know, occupy a state or not occupy a state. So let's call it this, right? So one of the, the, the we have the vacuum, right? No fermions. No fermion in one, no, no fermion in two. And we have, say, one fermion in one, zero fermions in two, zero fermions in one, one fermion in two. And of course, the full thing we have two, both of these single particle levels occupied. So this, this is my many body. Uh, if you if you wish Hilbert space, right? Okay, but let's add something like a superconducting pairing, which they do here at the the website. They you know they add this superconducting pairing. They're putting the one half here. I'm not gonna do that. So let's you know just keep in mind that let's put delta. C1, C2 dagger, plus the Hermitian conjugate, 
C2, C1. Notice the order here. This is important, right? N, M, M, N. When I take the Hermitian conjugate. All right. So what do we have here? Now, this is still a single particle. I mean, there's no, no quartic terms, right? So I can still use the same basis here. One thing I'm going to do, though, is, you know, try to, if I, if I write the Hamiltonian in this basis, so this thing, write the, the whole Hamiltonian there, I would get something like that. So this is energy, oops, sorry. This is zero. There's nothing there. So if I apply my two, the number, the number term, the number operator to this gives zero. Number operator to that gives zero. And this, of course, the diagonal part is zero. Now, this one, the homogeneous doesn't couple this guy to any of these two, right? So I get zero, zero here. However, if I if I create two a fermion in, in you know state two and a fermion in state one, I come up with this one. So I have here delta, right? And of course I have here delta star. This is a Hermitian Hamiltonian and so on. Now this state, I of course, there's one fermion there, so I, I get E1. And that's it, because there's no fermion here. And this state, uh, you know, the, for the diagonal part, doesn't have any, 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 anything else to do for us to do there. This one doesn't couple to any other state, because you see these terms here, they only couple uh, states where if I create or destroy these fermions in both uh, states one, zero, 1 and 2. So here, if I destroy a state, this state here goes to 0, I would have it, then this operator actually does that, but it tries to destroy a fermion here, which gives you 0. So this one doesn't couple to anybody else. Right, so I get zero here, zero here. Now, next one, it's pretty much the same thing, except now that I'm, I'm talking about epsilon two. So let's write it there. It doesn't couple to any other state. And this last one, it has both one and two occupied. So the diagonal part gives me an energy of one plus E2 and gives zero here. So well, that's this Hamiltonian there, written in this basis, right? Now, there's one thing I, I don't like about this representation. It is that it doesn't give us the hidden, or if you want, the consideration of the so-called parity. Meaning that, yeah, these terms are di diagonal, right? So these ones, they connect a state with zero fermions state with two fermions, meaning that what these two have in common is that they have the same parity. So let's define parity as minus one to the number of, of fermions, right? So if this is my definition, if I put the two states so let's reorder the basis and put zero zero here and one one here and then zero one or one zero here and zero one here now look at what happens now, I just reshuffle the lines, so the diagonals I uh, have something like that, right? This one mo moves up. And these two states are coupled to each other.
but they're not coupled to anybody else. Now, these other two states. They are di diagonal, right? And so I put my Hamiltonian in a very nice block diagonal form, right? Where this sector here has P equals plus one, right? I have either zero or two, so number of fermions is zero or two, so I get plus one here. While these states are occupied with only one fermion, so this is equal to minus. Right, so when I talk about parity, that's what I, 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 I like, you know, I like this form. That's where, what I am most familiar with. I do many body physics, so, I try to always think in terms of occupation number base, right? I'm not a, a, a BDG guy by heart, but I'm I'm learning it. So let's put this in the Bugalibov Dijen form and see what you get. But this is the Hamiltonian, you know, in terms of occupations. Notice that uh, the total number is kind of not conserved. If I had that diagonalize this, I'm going to be on a linear combination of state of zero and two fermions, so number is not actually conserved. These are the two are actually have a well-defined number, but they're odd. But let's always think in, think in terms of parity, right? Now let's do the Bogolyubov Dijen formulation. And essentially, the trick here is to break these two, and and essentially write something like that, right? So if I have C1, C1, I know that if I add this, oops, something like that, I get one, right? That's precisely what I wrote way up here. If I, I equals to J, this is one. All right, now I can, always write something like this if i have uh of course c1 dagger c1 equals one minus c1 c dagger and why not do something like that if i have my hamiltonian here I do something like that. I divide that epsilon one C one dagger C one and one half plus the other half. I write this. Oh, this is not in, you know, Regular form, what are you doing? Well, let's let's just keep going and see what we get. Let's do the same thing with the other one. Right? Epsilon 2, C2 dagger, C2 plus Epsilon 2, uh, 1 minus C2, C2 dagger. And let's close here. Now the other term that I had, I have, let, let's push this a little bit up. Let's write this term like this. But a half here, C1, C2. And I'll exchange C2 and C1 and get this. Right, then I'll get another one like this, which is these other term here. I don't do the same thing. C1, C2, the thing what I get, and then I will just reverse it. Now, oops, this is wrong there. Let's, this is also wrong. Let me correct 
that. Uh, let's put this, this. All right, let's do that. This is C2, oops. C2, C1, and this is C1. C2 minus with the star here. Right, now this is, essentially I did nothing here, I just uh, put it in a funny way, right? Uh, essentially, what I'm going to do is write something like that. I'll put this one half that appears in all terms here. And I write the whole thing a, as a matrix product of a vector, which is C1 dagger, C2 dagger, C1, C2. times a matrix that will be epsilon 1, epsilon 2, minus epsilon 1, minus epsilon 2. Here I'll have a 0, I'll have a 0, I'll have a delta. Here I have a zero, I have another zero, I have a delta star. Here I'll have a minus delta star. Here I'll have a, a minus delta. Zero and zero and zero and zero. Right. And what I did here, this is the transposed of this guy. So this is transposed, which is C1, C2, C1 dagger, C2 dagger. Now, this guy is a so-called Bogolubov degen form of my Hamiltonian. Notice this is just a, a form of rewriting that thing here. The the original Hamiltonian itself and see the single particle terms. So I'm I'm not I'm not diagonalizing it or I'm not writing in the number occupation basis. So so what, what does that mean? What happens if I diagonalize this guy? And how do I compare to the states that I, I get when I diagonalize the many-body operator, the many-body form of the homotonian? So yeah, we're gonna do that in a, in a second video. Uh, essentially, I'm running out of time, almost 20 minutes. So I'll keep this these videos on 20 minutes or less. So I'll see you in the, in the next video.